this is a huge, long scripture. And so rather than read it and then go over it, I'm, I'm going to read a sentence or two at a time and, and talk about this. This is part of our series, Steps to the Cross. And uh, as I study this scripture, it became very clear to me that a major reason Jesus died on the cross was because he raised Lazarus from the dead. There were Jewish people there comforting Mary and Martha. But some of them immediately became believers when they saw this man who'd been dead four days come alive. But some of them went to the scribes and Pharisees and said, listen, you know what just happened? And it wasn't the Jewish people that nailed him to the cross. They knew he was a great prophet. It was a scribes and Pharisees, the religious leaders that nailed him to the cross. How do you deal with somebody that raises somebody the dead? How do you deal with that when you want to keep your power and your money and your influence? The only way they could figure out was to have him killed. So as we get ready for Easter, remember Lazarus that we're going to be talking about today and being raised from the dead, that's the only way they could deal with Jesus. He was too powerful. And I'm, I'm, I've never heard this said in church service today, but this is still happening today. When people pray, every miracle that Jesus did happens. And I've seen this particular miracle happen more than once. And there, Doctors call it spontaneous remission. That's a medical term for a miracle. <laughs> it's a medical term for rising from the dead. And it's still happening. And it's not broadcast like Lazarus, you know. It's quiet, it happens in this corner of the world and that corner of the world. Let me tell you, Jesus is here, always. It's just like he was. Okay, this is from the... Message Bible, John 11. A man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. This was the same Mary who massaged Jesus' feet with aromatic oils, very expensive aromatic oils, and wiped them with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was so sick. So Mary and Martha, Lazarus' sisters, sent word to Jesus, Master, the one you love so very much is sick. This is Mary Magdalene. She was a prostitute. And she knew she had a lot of sins that needed to be forgiven. And when she found out where Jesus was, she anointed his feet with very expensive oil. Have you ever had a good foot massage? <laughs> the muscles and especially the nerves in your feet are connected to every other part of your body. It's almost like when you have a really good foot massage, it's like your whole body has been healed. And uh, the scribes and Pharisees said, She's wasted a lot of money. And it was, it was actually, it was Judas who was the treasurer. And John says, Judas said this because he liked to steal from the disciples' funds, <laughs> like some treasurers do. And Judas said, and the scribes of Pharisees agreed with him, this could have been sold and given to the poor, and she's wasted it on Jesus' feet. They had no idea. Judas and the scribes of Pharisees had no idea who Jesus really was. And Jesus said, leave her alone. She's preparing my body for burial. When Jesus got the message from the sisters, he said, this sickness is not fatal. It will become an occasion to show God's glory by glorifying God's son. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, but oddly, when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days. 
After the two days, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. And they said, Rabbi, you can't do that. The Jewish leaders are out to kill you. And you're going back? Jesus replied, are not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in daylight doesn't stumble because there's plenty of light from the sun. Walking at night, he might very well stumble because he can't see where he's going. Then he said these things. Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. I'm going to wake him up. This is not the first time Jesus uh, said that a person sleeping, well, a person that was dead was sleeping. You remember, there was a little girl, and she had died. And her parents asked Jesus to come and, and heal him. Heal her, heal, heal her, rather. And so... Jesus went there and he said, the little girl's asleep. And the people that had seen her die, they made fun of Jesus. And he asked them to leave the room. And so with the mother and father, and with Peter, James, and John, his three closest disciples, he went in. After all those people making fun of, of Jesus saying he, she's asleep, and Jesus took the little girl by the hand and she sat up. And God is very practical and Jesus said, give her some food now. <laughs> Isn't that, you wouldn't expect a thing from the Son of God like that, but it, 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 God's very practical. When you're hungry, when you've been real sick, get some food. I have a friend, every time she got sick, she quit eating. Her illness lasts two or three times longer than the average person. It's really true. Feed a cold and you starve a fever. So you guys, if any of you do that, well, my stomach's a little upset. I'm not going to, don't, don't do that. Do like the little girl. Jesus said, give her some food. And, and she got up. She was completely alive. So that, in this case, Jesus said, Lazarus is asleep. I'm going to wake him up. And... Uh, That's in verse 11. Uh, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. I'm going to wake him up. When Jesus got there, he found Lazarus already four days dead. Bethany was near Jerusalem, just a couple of miles away. And many of the Jews were visiting Mary and Martha, sympathizing with them over their brother. Now, this is very interesting. Mary was the closest of the two sisters, Martha and Mary, Mary was the closest to Jesus. In many ways, I think she was the most devastated by Lazarus' death. And so it wasn't Mary that went to greet Jesus. It was Martha. Martha heard Jesus was coming and went out to meet him. Mary remained in the house. Her heart was broken. Jesus could have saved him if he had been here. Why didn't he get her sooner? And Martha said, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Even now, I know that whatever you ask God, he will give you. So she had some faith. And then Jesus really, it almost destroyed her faith. Your brother will be raised up. Uh, and she basically said, uh, there's a typo here. I know he'll be raised up in the resurrection at the end of time. And Jesus said, you don't have to wait for the end. Right now, Resurrection and life. And he's speaking about Lazarus. Resurrection and life. And, and I would say that to you too. Right now you and I live in resurrected life. Our speaker, Friday. Isn't it great? 55 people. The place is packed. We had to keep bringing tables and chairs, you know. And we had enough food. It was like the feeding of the 5,000. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, I, re I remember him when he was dead. He was dead, spiritually. I have watched him come to life. Amazing. I mean, it's, it's right out of the New Testament. This man has come back from the dead. And now he's helping other people find new life. 
Oh my goodness. I'll start crying here so I better get going. And Jesus said, you don't have to wait till the end. I am, which is the Jewish word for God, I am right now resurrection and life. The one who believes in me, even though he or she dies, will live. And everyone who lives believing in me does not ultimately die at all. Do you believe this? And I would ask that question of myself and of you. Do you and I really believe that if we believe in Jesus, we don't ultimately die? He's talking about your eternal person. We don't die. We just immediately go to be with God. There's a verse in the Bible that says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And then Martha says, yes, Master, all along I believe that you're the Messiah, the Son of God, who comes into the world. After saying this, she went to her sister Mary and whispered in her ear, the teacher is here and is asking for you. I'm sure Jesus said to Martha, where's Mary? How come Mary isn't greeting me? And so he was asking for Mary. And the moment Mary heard this, she jumped up and ran out to him. Jesus had not yet entered the town, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When her sympathizing Jewish friends saw Mary run off, they followed her, thinking she was on her way to the tomb to weep at the tomb. Mary came to where Jesus was waiting and fell at his feet. Master, can you see this? She was so distraught, she fell at Jesus' feet. Master, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her sobbing, and the Jews with her sobbing, a deep anger welled up within Jesus. Now that's surprising, isn't it? They're crying. Jesus became very angry. There could be many reasons why he was angry. One of them was, the last enemy to be allowed in the world before the whole world ends and eternity begins, the last enemy is death, the Bible says. Death is a great enemy of every one of us as human beings. And I'm sure he had deep anger at death. And he said, where did you put him? Master, come and see, they said. And this is the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. For you and for me. And Lazarus. And Mary and Martha. This God that you and I follow is a God that loves us so much that he will cry for us. Jesus wept. For you, me, Lazarus, Mary, Martha, God really loves us a lot. It's just way more than Lazarus. And then again, the anger. So here he is weeping, and then he's angry. Doesn't he sound like you and me? He was human. He was fully God and fully human. Then Jesus, the anger again welling up within him, arrived at the tomb. These people were not rich, so it was a simple cave in the hillside with a slab of stone laid against it. This is the way Native Americans uh, bury their dead many times. Uh, Kathleen and I were on a, a beautiful river area in the Ozark Mountains, and the guide said, buried in the cliffs are Native Americans buried, and that's, that's how Lazarus was. He was buried in a, a simple cliff. They carved out an area and put a slab of stone. And we went by several areas where there were Native Americans buried. So this is a real common thing worldwide. A simple cave in the hillside with a slab of stone against it. Jesus said, remove the stone. Now Martha was a practical one. Lazarus' sister, and she said, Master, by this time, 
there's a stench. And the King James Bible said it a little more graphically. Lord, after so many days, he stinketh. <laughs> and sometimes I'll kid with my friends, you know. Yeah, but after so many days, he stinketh. <laughs> and I said, I'm quoting the Bible to you. <laughs> so Martha was very practical. She knew that his body was starting to decay. Uh, I was an administrator of the morgue at the University of Virginia Medical Center. I can attest to you this is true. <laughs> I tried to avoid going to the morgue as much as I could, uh, but uh, after three or four days, a person doesn't smell very good. And uh, good old Martha, you know, she's very practical. Jesus looked Martha in the eye. Didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? He's saying that to you and me, too. At times, you and I do not believe the Bible, Jesus, prayer. And Jesus says to you and me, haven't I been teaching you all your life that if you believe, you're going to see the glory of God? And then he looked at the other people around there and he said, go ahead, take away the stone. I'm sure it was very heavy. And they removed the stone. And then one of the most wonderful prayers in Jesus' life. He raised his eyes to heaven and prayed, Father, I am grateful that you have listened to me. I know you always do listen. But on account of this crowd standing here, I've spoken this out loud so that they might believe that you sent me. Boy, that's a declaration, isn't it? I'm more than Moses. I'm more than Elijah. I want them to hear what I'm praying to you. And then Jesus shouted. I'm not going to shout today. Somebody sleeping might wake up. <laughs> but one time I actually did a sermon. Uh, Lynn Townsend in the church in Lewisburg, my first church, he would fall asleep every he had his own business, he was really tired, but he would always come to church. He would fall asleep every Sunday, so I started real loud in the sermon. I got quieter and quieter and quieter, and then I yelled and slammed the pulpit. Lynn jumped up, and about four or five other people that I had never noticed before came awake too. <laughs> and so uh, Jesus yelled very loudly, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came out. Cadaver, of course, is the translation for this dead person came out. They still had, they were still, they would wrap dead people in cloth. So he was still wrapped from head to toe. He even had the, the kerchief, the handkerchief over his face. And Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him loose. Can you imagine if you were there at, at that tomb and Jesus says okay take off the grave clothes so he can walk take off the handkerchief off his face so he can see that he's alive can you imagine the emotions you'd have first of all he, he's a tomb robber right <laughs> he opens the tomb then he says I want you to see this because then you really believe and then he yells, probably, I don't know about you, but somebody yelling at a tomb, Lazarus come out, that would sort of startle me. And then Lazarus sits up, and he stands up, and he can't move because he's in this woven garment. And so can you imagine unwrapping Lazarus and letting him be free? I mean... Just talking about it makes a hair on the back of your head stand up. I don't have any hair on the top, so the hair on the back of my neck has to stand up. And this is the Easter message of this whole passage. This was a turning point for many of the Jews who were with Mary. It was a turning point in world history. They saw what Jesus did and believed in him. 
Now, Elijah was a great prophet like Jesus. And if you read the book of, of, in the Old Testament, it says Elijah was buried. And I don't know why they did it, but many years later, after Elijah was buried, they threw a dead person in the tomb and it touched Elijah's, Elijah's ashes. And that person came back to life. So this is not totally forgotten in the Hebrew scriptures. Jesus came in the spirit and power of Elijah, the Bible says. So that happened in the Hebrew scriptures. But this is even more dramatic. Here's a person dead four days. And many of the Jewish people that were there believed that Jesus was a lot more than just a prophet. He was more than Elijah, more than Moses. And it was the turning point in the history of the world. Jesus' resurrection and before his resurrection, the resurrection of Lazarus was a turning point in world history. That's why this is 2023. Because it's 2,023 years after Jesus' birth. This is a change, a shift in all world history, around the world. And that's why a third of the world is Christian today. Not dedicated Christians, but Christian in society, you know. And only a fourth is Islamic, but a third of the world is Christian today. And so there was another group of people there, too. They saw a person from the dead come alive, and what did they do? They went back to the Pharisees and told on Jesus. It reminds me of a little child saying, Mom and Daddy, you know what my brother did? <laughs> or Mom and Dad, you know what my sister did? They were tattletelling on Jesus. They saw one of the greatest miracles in the history of any human life. And they knew they'd get Jesus in trouble by going back to the authorities. This scripture, it's on the road to the cross. And basically, the authorities said, what are we going to do? And, and they said the same thing when he came down the Mount of Olives on Palm Sunday. What are we going to do? Everybody's following him. We'll lose all our power. We'll lose all. We've got to kill him. And they figured out a way how to do it. You know, one thing I've learned in life, having a real active life, is if somebody wants to kill you, they'll figure out a way. Because you and I can't hide. There's no way we can hide. And so uh, they figured out a way to kill Jesus. And it was for money. And it was for power. That's still going on today in every country in the world. People are getting killed for money and for power. But this is different. This story is different. No one in the history of the world has ever had people believe they were God in the flesh. There's been dozens if not hundreds of people that said I'm God follow me but nobody's ever believed them for a very long at all except for Jesus Jesus is the one exception in world history of where people believe that he actually was God in the flesh and actually rose from the dead so many hundreds of people saw him after he rose from the dead there was no question about it in Jewish life and in world life. So this is a major turning point of history. It's huge turning point of history. And it's much more than just a religious thing. A lot of Christians and Jews stayed in the Roman Empire. But there were also a lot of evangelists like the evangelist, the Apostle Thomas. He went down the west coast of India, and to this day, 
those Christian churches on the west coast of India are called the Mar Tama churches. Mar is the Latin word for ocean. The ocean Christian churches that Thomas evangelized and Thomas's disciples. But as a general rule, Christians didn't get out and evangelize. And so, uh, this is going to sound bad to you as Christians, but it's the truth. Islam believed everything about Jesus that you and I believe, except for the resurre resurrection. Islam then spread clear to the Philippine Islands, and they learned about the name of Jesus and learned that he was a great prophet. But Muhammad was the most important prophet, and Jesus was just a great prophet. But they learned about Jesus, and in every Islamic country today, there are followers of Jesus. They're being quiet about it because they'll be killed or lose their jobs. It's just like Russia under atheism. I knew there were millions of Christians that still believed in Jesus, but if they told anybody, they'd lose their jobs. So there were millions of quiet Christians. That's it happening in the Islamic world today. So this, this rising Lazarus from the dead is world-changing history. And it's alive today. Jesus is alive today, still raising people from the dead like this wonderful man Friday night in our fellowship hall. And uh, if you're going through a difficult time in your life today, this same Jesus is right with you. In the tombs where you and I live in our sorrow, you're not alone. And he's still calling out to you and to me, come forth, become alive, become real, become happy even in darkness and in pain. Amen.